I1 Profiler's Advanced User Mode creates a more customized profile display than Basic Mode, even automatically correcting flare that may fall on your screen while you're working. This video shows the I1 Display device. However, other devices that support ambient light measurements can be used. Before you begin, warm up your display for about 30 minutes to ensure the color is stable. Select the Advanced Radio button, then Display Profiling. Across the bottom are the steps you'll perform to create your display profile. As you complete each one, click the next step in the workflow to move on. Advanced Mode allows you to save your settings as an asset for future use. After you make your selections on a screen, click the Save button. The new asset will appear here in the left pane, under the correct category, such as Display Settings, Profile Settings, Measurements, and many others. Then, when you're ready to use that asset, click Load and select it. The left pane also houses the Help menu. Click the question mark and it appears. Click it again and return to the list of assets. If you have more than one display connected, select the one to calibrate and profile, then choose the type from the list. If you're not sure of your display's type, check the manufacturer's specifications. Then select the white point for your profile. At the top are the standard CIE daylight illuminants. D65 is the choice for most people working in photography and graphics. D50 is commonly used in prepress. Native will use the white point of your monitor. This setting is for those who already set the white point of their monitor through some other method and do not want to change it. Near the bottom are the options to set custom white point values using either a daylight temperature slider control for values from 5000 to 7500 or entering the XY chromaticity coordinates. For those working in a controlled lighting condition, there is an option to match your monitor's white point to the measured white point of your ambient light. This option can also be used to measure and match the white point of a viewing booth. I'll use the most common choice of D65. Next, select the luminance of the display. Most users of LCDs will find that 120 provides a display that is bright enough to judge color and details in highlights and shadows. If you're having a hard time seeing details in the highlights, try selecting a lower value. Use Native if you don't want to change your monitor's luminance value. Custom is available if you want to select any value between 80 and 250. There's also an option to have the software automatically determine your display's optimum luminance level based on a measurement of your room's ambient light conditions or light booth intensity. This option works well when comparing printed output to images on your display. If you're matching multiple displays, marking contrast ratio will calibrate them to a similar dynamic range. Native uses the full dynamic range of your display while Custom allows you to limit the contrast ratio to a value you define. Flare light falling on your screen can affect the display's contrast ratio. Flare Correct will adjust the measurements so they more accurately capture the contrast ratio and color capabilities of your display. If you don't use a monitor hood, it's a good idea to mark this box to improve the overall color accuracy. Ambient light affects the way you perceive colors on your display. Ambient light smart control will make adjustments to the display's profile based on measurements of your current lighting conditions. If your environment has poor or inconsistent lighting, we recommend using this feature. When placing the device, make sure it's in the general ambient light of your environment, not under a desk lamp, near monitor glow, or in a shadow. Let's move on to Profile Settings. These configuration options are for advanced users, and we recommend sticking with the defaults. Patch Set shows the color swatches that will be displayed and measured on screen. You have the option to choose one of the standard patch sets, small, medium, or large, and you have the option to choose custom colors as well. For example, you can load in a favorite image and the software will automatically extract the key colors from that image. 
or you can load Pantone colors from the Pantone Color Manager application. Larger patch sets and custom colors can improve the overall color accuracy of your display profile. Today, I'll use the default patch set. You have two options for adjusting your monitor's brightness and contrast. If you select Adjust Manually, i1 Profiler will guide you through the process to set your controls to the ideal condition. If you mark ADC, i1 Profiler will make these adjustments for you. We're going to use ADC, but to see the manual adjustment process, watch the i1 Profiler Basic Display Profiling video. OK, it's time to measure. Click Start Measurement. The software will prompt you to hang your measuring device on the display. It's important to make sure the i1 display is lying flat against the screen. Click Next and a series of colors will be displayed and measured. If you selected Flare Correct, you'll see this window. Hold the device 12 inches from the screen, watch the progress bar, and click Next. And if you selected Ambient Light Smart Control, this window will appear. Click Next. This preview shows the expected values in the upper left corner of each patch and the measured values in the lower right. Click the ICC Profile button. Give your profile a name that includes the name of the monitor. If you're using a Macintosh, you have the option to select User Level if you want this profile to only be available to you. Select System Level if you would like everyone who uses this computer to be able to use the profile. You can also receive a reminder to reprofile in one, two, three, or four weeks. If you enabled either the Ambient Light Smart Control or Flare Correct options and you're not working in a light-controlled environment, i1 Profiler can monitor the ambient light for you. Simply leave your device plugged in and the software will check the ambient light at the frequency you select. Although this video shows the i1 display device, other devices that support ambient light measurements can be used. Click Create and Save Profile to build the new custom profile. When it's complete, you can change these radio buttons to compare how the image looked before and after the calibration. Other images are available behind this drop-down to help you evaluate your monitor's color. If you're curious, click the middle LUTs button to see which calibration adjustments i1 Profiler made to the computer's video card. This fine-tuning helps match the display to the selected white point and gamma settings. And a gamut view is available by clicking the first button. With i1 Profiler, it really is that simple to create a profile that is customized to your display and changing light conditions.